So we get a lot of questions about how to add a vent to a Xena tank. Is there a... So we're gonna just drill out the rivets. We've already verified with a mirror that there is, there is a bung in here, so we don't have to deal with that. So just remove the skin. We're gonna drill just the heads off, and then pull the skin. We're gonna try not to drop any rivets down in the bay because it could chew up the tank if we get one underneath the tank. All right, so we pulled one side, the uh, wing tank, because we needed to add a, a vent line. The tank actually came with the bung in it, it just wasn't utilized. Uh, so it's, you can tell actually, if, if you put your finger down in here, you can tell if there's a bung there, or you can use a little mirror. <clears throat> We're putting in a quarter or a three eighths to quarter adapter, because that will bring it out a little bit. So, and we can still get the tank in there. And then when we made an access hole in the bottom of the wing that we can get up here and screw a fitting in. So that's uh, right here. We made an access panel there. We also drilled a hole after we marked where the uh, bung is gonna go, right there. And then we're just gonna make a, a ring and an access panel here. You can also buy those pre-made, I think. Now let's take a look up inside. We prepped a lot of stuff. We put grommets in for our uh, Versa tubing that's gonna go through here and through here behind the wing since we got the 12 gallon tanks. And then it's just gonna go forward and hook up to the bung we just looked at on the wing there. Um, it took us a little while to get all the rivets out nice and clean without damaging anything. We used all kinds of methods from uh, punching out the rivet stems carefully. You have to be careful with this stuff that you don't dent it. To drilling the top heads of the rivets, to using a little Dremel tool for the ones that were really, really stubborn. Um, a, a little wood or a little spa spackle, uh, spatula. We, we used as a little wedge to pry the skins apart and shear, shear the heads of the rivets. So we used all kinds of methods. And then at the end, we went use some diagonal pliers. We run underneath here and we pulled the rivets from the backside in order to get the, all of this cleaned up and ready for the skin to go back on. All right, I don't think there's anything more to show. Um, we're gonna put in that Versa tubing. We, we went with Versa tubing up into this bay right here now, and we're gonna join onto it and then come back and up to and the Versa tubing is something you can get from Spruce. Uh, we use quarter inch from the vent for the vent. It's a very soft tubing. You can bend it any which way you want. And then just put a little loom on it where it's gonna chafe or it might chafe. So here you can see it. There's the end. We're gonna use a union up in here since this is a nice place to join it together if you ever had to remove the wings. And also doing a complete run uh, without any uh, breaks in it is difficult and then we as you can see we had anti-chafe on it there and then it goes out here along with the main fuel line right here there's the main fuel line behind it and then we routed this just right through and then on the inside of the airplane we were actually able to just make all the bends in the tubing with no breaks and we use grommets everywhere and put a grommet there, there, and then right back into that where the he new header tank is gonna be. So that all worked pretty good. And we'll put the piece of tubing into the wing and then we'll show that and we'll put the tank back in and close it up. All right, so we have access here. We're gonna join these pieces together right here. And then it goes back and we have a grommet back in there. And then it uh, eventually ends up at this inspection hole here. And it's gonna end up going into, with a ferrule and a fitting into the tank. And then if we look up inside here, we just kind of crosses the bay 
aft of the aft of where the fuel tank sits. Right there. Very good. Ready to put the tank back in, put some cork, rivet everything back down. Make sure that you clean this real good. Uh, even a tiny little piece of rivet will chew a hole in your tank and you don't want that. All right, so it's going back in. Our uh, false spar here, or it was so tight that we, we drilled out these rivets as well in order to be able to pull on it and pop the tank down. And then we're just gonna put those rivets back in. That made it a lot easier. In fact, it was the key to the whole thing. Now let's take a look at our uh, hole here again and see if, uh, if we got it nailed. Oh yeah, let's see, that's gonna go level fitting. We'll be able to work that real easy and put the tube on through this access hole. Starting to come together. All right, so there you can see the feed line and the vent line through the grommets and to the back. It's another way of doing it. We've always used hose. Um, we still recommend obviously either one. Hose is great for the run up to the engine because it takes vibration and then high pressure and it's easy to route and a chance of leaks is slim. Here we ended up with compression fittings, which also is working nice. And then we'll just, uh, we have a feed from each side here. And then um, it's a little bit skinnier than running hose. And then we got one on each side and we just ran a vent on one side. All right, and then we'll, uh, we'll just kind of continue that on, might as well right into the header tank with another compression fitting.